the last bit of energetic theory or enthalpies theory left is about a definition and this is a term called the enthalpy of atomization it's similar to bond enthalpies but there's slight difference now bond enthalpies were always about breaking gaseous bonds to make gaseous atoms while enthalpy of atomization is basically the enthalpy change when one mole of gaseous atoms is formed so if i were to write the definition which is exactly like in the notes this is the enthalpy change change when one mole of gaseous atoms are formed from the element it's supposed to come from in its standard state now you might think well gaseous atoms were formed for bond energies also but bond energies were defined by the number of by by one mole of bonds here is this is defined by the number of moles of gaseous atoms so the point being that is the enthalpy change when you make one mole of gaseous atoms i give you an idea so you want to make one mole of chlorine gaseous atoms but it could also be for metals this could also be for uh macromolecules it can also be for liquids that become gaseous atoms so basically the this is the enthalpy change and we, the way we write this is delta h atm for atomization and all of these basically the idea is enthalpy change when you make one mole of gaseous atoms so you want to make one mole of gaseous atoms so that's what you made so the first part of the definition is you what you've covered first you want to make one mole of gaseous atoms so i am trying to show you a particular definition where the enthalpy change is to make one mole of gaseous atoms from the elements in the standard state so in the first row we had chlorine right so chlorine's standard state is cl2 gas and to make one cl atom you have to have half a mole of gas to make sodium gaseous atom you still need one mole of sodium from in a standard state so what's sodium in a standard state it's a solid it's a metal solid so this overall change to go from a solid to a gas for sodium is the atomization of sodium silicon is a macromolecule it's also a solid macromolecule and all the bonds are broken to become gaseous atoms while br2 is a liquid so at room temperature br2 which is a standard state is going to be a liquid but we can't have two br2 one br2 we need only one br gas so we have half a br2 so here for example this value right here delta h the first one is about you know positive 121 kilojoules per mole now for some the value is will closely resemble bond energy what i mean is that if I, if you remember the bond energy for chlorine is 242 you won't you won't remember but i'm telling you from the data booklet and but the equation of bond energy remember you're breaking one mole of gaseous bonds so for chlorine it seems to be that the bond energy equation in blue on top and the enthalpy of atomization equation have a relationship because the value for this one at the top by the way the bond energy for chlorine is actually 242 kilojoules per mole which if you realize is literally double of this or atomization is half of this and when you look at the equation it's the same identical equation just that it is half off so for elements which are gaseous the atomization equation is literally half of the bond enthalpy equation i mean think about hydrogen for example i'll put hydrogen also so one mole of gaseous hydrogens will just be half h2 becoming h gas which literally is exactly half of the bond energy equation of hydrogen because hydrogen is a gaseous atom gaseous molecule so for some the atomization is literally the half the atomization 
but it is in the case for the others because there is no bond energy in sodium it's an uh, it's a what we call it it's a metal so this reaction the one in blue and they will give it to you you know you don't you don't need to know what this how we got this value they will give it to you but what this is meaning is that you need this many joules kilojoules to convert one mole of sodium metal to one mole of sodium gaseous atom and you know later on you can connect the dots this is the same gaseous atom for sodium that you needed to have it undergo ionization energies because if you remember ionization energies was the def technical definition for ionization energy was enthalpy change when one mole of i electrons is lost from one mole of gaseous atoms so atomization takes anything in a standard state and converts it into gaseous atoms standard state gaseous atoms the last one here for bromine is liquid to gas which will no long which will not be the same as half the bond energy of bromine because the bond energy of bromine by the way is 193 so br br bond energy is 193 This isn't half of that, because bromine's bond energy is from a gaseous molecule. This is a liquid molecule. This fellow's delta H, and I'm just giving it to you. You don't need to learn this. Obviously, is one one two kilojoules per mole, which you realize is more than just half of this. And in fact, you can even break it up into a Hess cycle. This one, last one. If you want to know the atomization of bromine, really is. first making it into a gas and then breaking half a mole of gaseous bonds so this right here like this is the atomization of bromine and let me let me make it a little more larger so i'm telling you that the relationship can be determined for some for example if bromine uh bond to become two bromine gaseous atoms is this is bromine gaseous bond to gaseous atom is delta h is 193 and the atomization equation of bromine is liquid becoming one mole of br gas and this delta h is let's say plus 112 kilojoules per mole and if i treat this as my box a in my has cycle and this is my box b then i do have option of box c which would be gaseous atoms remember now liquid to gaseous atoms no i already have gaseous atoms in b so i don't put gaseous atoms here this is the gaseous atom so what i have here is that i would want to convert this into a molecule gaseous molecule so basically this arrow that i'm just going to draw now is orange one is liquid becoming gas and this blue one is gaseous bonds becoming at uh gaseous atoms so this arrow is literally half of this so this is the bond energy and the blue arrow is half the bond energy but atomization isn't just that it's also liquid to gas it's also you could say vaporization because that is what this is this is delta h so you are introducing to a new term here also vaporization but since it's for only half a mole this will be for half of so i am just showing you here how atomization has some relation to bond energy but not always directly in some cases it's partly but in chlorine's case it was identical if you notice chlorine's atomization is literally half of the bond energy but bromine's atomization is not just half of bond energy it was half of bond energy and half of vaporization because bromine's standard state is liquid and for uh, metals it can't be anything because it's just solid to gaseous atom which is from a metal to a gaseous atom it's not really any covalent bond breaking but this is the definition of atomization and it can help you solve some questions later on also absolutely you can also for example and i just give you a couple of more atomizations just to say see sulfur is found as s8 so the atomization of sulfur would be s8 solid 
becoming S gas. But since I want one mole of S gas, I'd need one eighth of S8. If it's the atomization of carbon, carbon is solid to carbon gas. This is graphite, that's the standard state of carbon, to carbon gas. This yellow line, yellow equation is the atomization of carbon. The blue on top is the atom is the equation that represents the atomization of sulfur. And first of all, most important thing will be to actually write the atomization to represent the to be able to write the equation that represents the reaction. All right. So let me show you where you can use this in a calculation. So this is question right here taken from your uh, notes, a skill check. This is saying that using bond enthalpies, because sometimes you can't just use bond enthalpies. You'll have to also use atomization of carbon to calculate the enthalpy change of this reaction. So this is the reaction whose enthalpy change they want, which is really three carbon solids and four hydrogen gases becoming, that's the X, C3H8 gas. Now C3H8 is three carbons, bonded and then C8CH bonds. So C3H8 is a lot of bonds by the way. Has two CC bonds and eight CH bonds. And all of these can become gaseous atoms. That's what I would use. And what, what I'll do is I'll make an arrow from all of them. So three carbon gases, add solids to three carbon gases. Four H2s will become eight H's. And you break all of these bonds you're gonna get, again, three carbons and eight H's. So, basically the green arrow right here is three carbons, and what are gaseous atoms? I can even write them. It's three carbon gas and eight hydrogen gas, if you want to. And three carbon solid to three carbon gas is three times the atomization. This is the atomization of carbon. What is it? 715 is for one mole. This is for three, so this is three times three one five seven one five. You needed this atomization to solve this using bond energy because the rest of them have bond energies, but carbon solid to carbon gas is called atomization. So at times of solving bond energy questions, you will need atomization. And this white arrow will be four times H H bonds, that means four times four thirty six. The data is given right there. And this yellow arrow is a multiple bonds. It's got two carbon carbon bonds and eight carbon hydrogen bonds, which really comes out to two, three, 48, plus eight, four, one, twelves. And so, this would be, the start box would be A. So you'll start from A, go to B, and then B to C would be two times three, 48, which is carbon, carbon, and eight times four, one, two. And that'll equal to directly A to B, which will be three times seven one five and four times four thirty six and this will let you solve for the value for x so this comes out to minus one zero three as the delta h for the reaction yeah awesome so this is how you can use delta h atomization in questions this and also the equations that define it